Hi, brothers and sisters. It's good to join with you. I think a lot about that word joining lately. The old way of thinking is that we join by the proximity of bodies, that we have to be in the same room as people to be connected in the one mind, in the Christ mind. And I much prefer the new way of thinking and perceiving and understanding that true joining is in the mind, is in the Christ mind. And we join there simply by recognizing who we truly are, what we truly are. We remember our true nature, who we are as God created us, as one, as one sonship, perfectly united, perfectly whole and complete, perfectly equal, made of love, and that all that we do in truth as creations of God being love, all that we do is extend love, know that we are love and extend that true self to one another. And it, it's really just what seems like one another, that we are different. But what we extend as that love, as we give it, we receive it. As we extend it, we awaken a greater memory of it in ourselves, knowing it to be what we truly are. And so I, I thank you for joining me in the one mind of Christ, all apparent brothers and sisters, as we come into this beautiful awareness of our true nature, our true self. I felt guided to talk about the escape from darkness. <laughs> Sounds like a kind of <laughs> transition in tone here, but really it's not. It's uh, There is, in truth, there is love behind all of this. And even when I say something like the escape from darkness, only from the old way of thinking, only from the ego perspective, does this seem like something fearful, something negative. Um, and uh, I'll be the first to admit that when I believed in the ego's perceptions of things, I, I did feel like there needed, I needed to find an escape, that the lingering darkness that seemed to keep seducing me, uh, that every time that it would um, come back into my experience, that this was some kind of curse. Um, and that led me to attempt to hide it, to bury it, to try to forget that it was there, uh, rather than applying the answer, the true escape. And um, so I was reading <clears throat> in the course this morning, um, this section called The Escape from Darkness, and uh, I'd like to share something. Uh, 
Now this is uh, very early in the text. It's uh, only like on page like 10, 11, 12, something like that. Um, and I love flipping back to the beginning of the text and uh, just refreshing my awareness with the way that it you know, it starts to lay it out for you and to just lay down the basics. And some of them are just so radical and blunt and straightforward. And um, it just, uh, there's this pain, there's this uh, bright resonance. And uh, I just, I just love it. And for me, this was kind of timely because I am connecting with uh, new or not new but deeper layers of the teaching of true forgiveness and what we can call transmutative forgiveness the process of transmutation and the experience has been getting out of the old plan to just hide the things, hide the little aspects of darkness that seemed like they couldn't be healed or that they just were always going to be that way. They were just little secret cherished parts of split mindedness of, uh, lacking part aspects that lacked the memory of love coming in to heal them and in discovering and uh, experiencing true forgiveness uh, true transmutation um, thanks to uh, the group non-dual devotion and their beautiful spiritual community I had the beautiful experience of realizing that this supposed curse of having these hidden shadow aspects just buried and untouchable, that it's not, it's not a curse, first of all, that there is this unimaginable gift of love that is the answer, that is the power that does the transmutation, that allows the transmutation. And it was from hiding these things, keeping them out of sight, uh, being in denial basically, that kept them uh, as something substantial, as something that had power, something that could still make me afraid. And the, the realizing of this unimaginable, perfect love that is simply waiting willingness and readiness and choice, just the giving over of these secret fears to love. The curse is not a curse anymore. It is just this, <laughs> words can't describe, um, this recognition of the loving answer, the, the loving purpose of bringing these little things, these little fears out of the shadow and into the light where it's like a walking through a wall, which is just a made up barrier. It's a, a totally made up idea of a limitation and trusting that walking through it 
makes it disappear. Walking into it with the trust in love, in God, and in this choice to choose grace. The fear is literally laughed away. And what's on the other side of that is to realize that that barrier never existed. Those ideas of fear, they never existed. Those uh, dark places that I was convinced couldn't be exposed, couldn't be given attention. Um, they were, they were made up and seemed to have power from being tightly held onto, from being given substantiality. So it was a very beautiful experience to uh, be with uh, this spiritual community, non-dual devotion, and to, uh, actually experience the process of uh, exposure and forgiveness and attentively allowing the transmutation. Uh, it's the real heart of the matter when it comes to what we call forgiveness, what we call overlooking. That can be, you can, we can feel like we're accomplishing that at the intellectual level of understanding forgiveness. Um, for example, we might think that forgiveness is just no longer thinking angry thoughts about someone, um, no longer being mad, no longer having thoughts of grievances. Um, but underneath the conscious thoughts of uh, anger, attack, loss, whatever it is, whatever kind of pain, suffering, Underneath the thoughts is energy, like an energetic vibration. And this can come into awareness. It can surface into awareness in the experience of emotional energy. Um, you can call it like a trigger moment when something comes up. And fear can just completely take over. Fear can uh, be very seductive in that, you know, we start running the beliefs of past learning, like, uh, oh no, not again, I've, I've got to run, I've got to shut this down, I've got to bury it, I've got to uh, put on a good face, cover it up. <clears throat> And that's actually the opposite of what we do in transmutation. It's about uh, attentively allowing this emotional energy to come to the surface of awareness, to come into the conscious experience and to allow it without judgment, without the mind wandering into the old beliefs about it without giving any of the old thinking patterns power. And this is not something that we as the individual do by ourselves. This is uh, what, we, what we do is just make the choice, just establish in the mind the willingness to let the Holy Spirit be the corrective principle, let the Holy Spirit handle the conversion of this emotional energy that's surfacing. And even though we may be aware of the fear being there, we go into it, we move through it. And at the onset of doing this, it the, you know, the thoughts will tell you this is going to go badly. This is, we don't want this. Um, you know, it's so mistrained 
to do the wrong thing, uh, to bury it, to cover it up, um, to, con to keep it as something substantially worthy of fear and avoidance. And so it is with the grace, it is with the allowing and the trust that we move through this fear, this seeming barrier. And it just, it evaporates. And now there, there may be, and you know, likely will be an experience of emotional intensity and that's not to be avoided. Um, there's the idea is that we don't go into any resistance about this emotional energy surfacing. We, we are trusting that it's coming up for healing. And so that is what we are allowing to happen. And doing this at first um, was, was very daunting for me. Um, having found a great peace and a way to uh, sustain that peace most of the time, and yet uh, having some triggers still come up from time to time and wanting to just bury them deeper, keep them away. And that was coming from the place of not fully understanding what we are here to do and what the deeper meaning of forgiveness is. So while it was daunting at first, it was with the help of mighty companions who practice this, who live for this, who live for this understanding of healing the split mind. With that kind of support, uh, I was able to have the experience of uh, just deciding, okay, I'm ready, let's do this. And uh, looked at what was surfacing and went to the scariest thing in there, the thing that seemed the most powerful, the, the darkest, the, the thing that was most cherished as something uh, like a special kind of aspect of victimhood and exposed it and let it come and moved through the barrier. And that is when I found this indescribable love awaiting me. So, the escape from darkness. Um, this, is, uh, this is in chapter one of A Course in Miracles. It's uh, part four. And uh, this is just a, a small portion that I wrote in my notes that I want to share. It says that there are two stages. One is the recognition that darkness cannot hide. <laughs> and this step usually entails fear. <laughs> the second stage is the recognition that there is nothing you want to hide, even if you could. <laughs> and this step brings escape from fear. When you become willing to hide nothing, you will not only be willing to enter into communion, but will also understand peace and joy. And I wrote here, this sounds like transmutation process. <laughs> um, and this is at the beginning of the text. This isn't even in the more, you know, in the later chapters where, you know, it seems to really get into it. Now, of course, it's the course is the same message 
just over and over again in different ways to meet you where you are, meet you how uh, you can receive this. Um, but this is just something very beautiful that I wanted to share because this is exactly what it is when you uh, have that devotion come on board when you realize this is what I am here to do. It's not to be a better human or um, have a certain uh, human life, a certain lifestyle. It's not about acquisitions or having things or really accomplishing things in the world. It's not even about changing the world a form that we see. What we are here to do is, is our one purpose, our one function. And that is, you know, simply put as forgiveness. But as we let this teaching come into the mind and awaken the memory that's on the heart already, the deeper understanding is that there is a true forgiveness. There is a true transmutation that we are called to allow to take place with our willingness. When we say choose again, it's pointing to this process of letting the secret hidden shadow aspects come into awareness to surface to expose them without judging it, without resisting it, to turn the mind to the faith that this is what you are here to do, that doing this, being willing to let the Holy Spirit heal this is, is truly your purpose. And this healing may feel like you're giving it to yourself as an individual, but this is a healing for the one mind that is dreaming, that is perceiving itself as split separate aspects. The miracle places the mind in the service of the Holy Spirit. It corrects its errors, which are merely lacks of love. Your mind can be possessed by illusions, but spirit is eternally free. The mind that serves spirit is invulnerable. That is the truth that is on the other side of this barrier that seems to be there. This fear that says, go back, don't come here. This is off limits. This is where we choose again to recognize that fear of any kind is a distortion. It is an illusion. It's made up. And you can unmake it. That is the power of the mind. Choose again. Choose the truth. That is the power. The power of God, the power of love is in that truth that you are choosing. And it will meet you. And there is joy, and there is bliss, and there is even more, even brighter faith. And 
And this is what we're here to do. All right. Thank you for joining me. Peace be with you.